Hey, if you're just getting into TIG welding and you're getting ready to do it around the house, this video is for you. TIG welding, otherwise known as gas tungsten arc welding or Healy arc for you older guys, uses a tungsten electrode that's not consumable, meaning you don't burn the electrode up. Uh, uses argon inert shielding to protect that arc. It's good for thinner metals, like you guys do an auto body out there uh, for your for your body work. You can use TIG for low heat input. Doesn't warp your metal. Doesn't produce any spatter like stick welding. A little bit more controllable. Different size filler metals for different size welds. So the common tools you're going to need for TIG welding course is a TIG torch. I like to use these uh, amplified uh, big green Hulk TIG torches. Now you aren't going to need a 300 amp like this thing here. You probably need a 150 or 100 amp for what you're doing around the house. This is for heavy duty production welding. So you need a TIG torch complete with a cup, some sort of gas distribution uh, uh, nozzle in there, a diffuser or whatever, a source of argon, we got a great big tank here, but you can get a high pressure tank, looks like an oxygen bottle. You welders at home, you might have a setup more like this, uh, you know, we're in a shop, we're, we're set up for some uh, productivity. Normally you got a setup like this, you got a high pressure bottle, gas bottle, uh, normally argon, argon or helium, and you'll have a flow meter like this. Basically when you set your TIG torch up, you really only need 20 CFM of gas. 15 to 20 max for what you're gonna be doing, especially if you're in a garage out of the weather. That will save you gas, save you a little bit of money, and help you get through it. You may also have a setup like this, it's a different type of flow meter for a little more pressure. I like to have a grinder around, keep a four inch grinder. I also have a drill. I'm going to show you how to use that drill because you got to get a certain point on that tungsten for it to work really good. Of course, you need a welding machine. AC, DC preferably. You can use AC TIG on your aluminum work. We normally use DC TIG. You'll use DC TIG on carbon steel, body work, things like that. A stick welder can be a TIG welder. So if you got some sort of stick welder at the house that runs DC positive or negative, you can run your TIG torch off there. You'll have to put your TIG torch on negative. So that means when you're normally stick welding, your negative goes to the workpiece or the ground. You'll reverse those when you're TIG welding. Put your ground on your TIG torch, put your positive on the workpiece, and you're ready to go. You want to have your uh, your typical PPE, personal protective equipment, your safety. Safety glass is a must. Welding hood, probably a shade, nine or ten lens in there. Uh, some light welding gloves. You don't need the heavy duty stick gloves like you normally wear for stick welding. Really long sleeves. TIG welding is really good at giving you a sunburn, so make sure you got that skin covered up. So when you're running your TIG torch, you guys at home, you'll probably be wanting to run, if you're doing auto body, you'll be down there on that lower amperage, probably 45, 50, maybe 60 amps. And if you're doing like 3 8 plate, you can be up there around 100, 120 amps, something like that. Again, make sure you're uh, DC electrode negative on your TIG torch. If you guys are doing some sort of exotic metal, let's say you get a hold of a piece of stainless steel exhaust tubing, pretty thin metal, get you a little scrap piece of that that you're not gonna use. Try to weld two pieces of that together without burning a hole in it, and that'll tell you where your amperage is at. It's gonna be pretty low amperages, but if you're not sure, always start out with a piece of scrap, get it set on there, and then go to your finished product. An important part of your TIG welding is the grind on your tungsten. You have to get a certain angle on that and a certain grind mark on there for the arc to be really good and stable. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in just a moment. Get you a trusty old drill. That's what I had the drill here for. Take you a four and a half inch grinder, put your face shield down, fire the grinder up, and start the drill. Get your helper if you can find one. That, that, that's a pretty important tool. Somebody to hold your stuff for you. And when you're done, you should have a nice, sharp, shiny, pointy grind on there. You want a certain amount of tungsten sticking out towards the end of your cup. And what I'll do is I'll stick a piece of wire up to the top of my cup and touch into my tungsten. That should be roughly 45 degree angle. That's a good starting point for your tungsten. Now we're gonna go over walking the cup. Basically, we're gonna set the cup down on a piece of plate. And we're gonna make figure eights with our hand. And that's gonna step it forward and put a little weave in there. We're going to set our cup right down on here like this, and we're just going to do little figure eight motions with our hand. It's like rolling a 55 gallon drum. You roll it this way, then you twist it, and roll it this way to get that forward motion. And if you put that together in one smooth step, that's how you get that walk. Ready? Mm. Golly, that was going good. I didn't want to quit. So we're going to freehand, which is a little different than walking the cup. We're not going to touch the cup to our plate. We're just going to hold it up here and work it.
This is what freehand will look like. It's real similar to walking the cup, it's just you don't have your cup sitting on the metal. And I just do this weave motion right here. But see how I got my fingers braced on the back of that other piece of plate to steady me up. So that's what freehand would look like. Now walking the cup is literally just like that, except for you're rolling it along there like a barrel. And you can practice this kind of stuff. When I was learning, you practice it with a glass, a jar, you know, whatever whatever you got in your hand that's round, you can pretty much walk it around the kitchen table until you get the motion. If you got a TIG torch set up at home and you're walking your cup like this, a lot of times you can see the little scratches in the metal. If you're getting your walk right, there's a nice little zigzag there. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but I can see it where I'm standing. You can practice TIG welding without filler wire. You can literally just fire up, start walking your cup on your base metal, get a puddle started and dry wash it. It's good to have a little bit of color in your weld. When you're welding stainless steel, it'll turn blues and, and silvers and kind of a wheat color and reds and purples. When you get into the gray, like a dull gray color, you're getting too hot on your stainless. If that little TIG welding video helped you out and you want to take that to the next level, get into some piping or something, Go to applytoweld.com and we'll see you on the next weld. Pew pew!